Today I'm going to talk some more about the yarn counter. I've been spending a lot of my time on this the past few weeks, and at this point I wanted to share a bunch of the design decisions I've been making and also get some feedback from the community. So first off, uh, with the new prototype, I want to talk about the size of it. I spent a lot of time really figuring out how big the electronics be have to be, how where can the battery fit, where can the screen fit, where can the keypad fit, um, taking into account the size of this pulley, because you want to keep that large because it, it helps increase the accuracy when measuring yarn length. So I've taken all of those things into account, and I'm pretty happy with this size. So the previous prototype, I was just sort of getting a feel for it. This one, I've designed uh, most of the electronics and things that go inside of it, so I know everything should fit in this size of a device, and I'm quite happy with uh, the overall size. It's it's small, and it'll be light, so it'll be inexpensive to ship, and also it fits in your hand really nicely, so... Overall, I think uh, this is probably what the size is going to be like on the final device. I'll, I'll make the case a little nicer around some of the corners still and things like that, but uh, this is the size I sort of expect it to be. So the next thing I spent a lot of time on that I want to talk about is the keypad. So this is just a paper cutout of the buttons that I plan to use. You can see that there's a, a power button, a reset button, a menu button, and then an up and down button. And this is just a, a temporary example of what I'll be doing. The final one will be colorful. I can use up to four colors, and it'll look much better than this. But uh, the idea is that it'll sort of layer in here and uh, be flush with sort of the top. And I'm, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I did consider a bunch of other options for, um, like, individual buttons and things, but sort of price-wise, also this protects it from the elements a lot more than your regular button system would. Uh, I'm, and it also sort of fits into my design better than other systems would. So uh, there's a lot of different kinds of these keypads. So these are called membrane keypads. And here's an example of one that I've used in other projects. And there's a lot of different qualities of these. So at gas stations, at least in America, we often have these, at least where I live, and they're oftentimes very flat and kind of hard to use. So those are kind of the ones that last the longest but uh, and are also the cheapest, but you can get slightly more expensive ones and they have a nice tactile feel, like the buttons here are all raised so you can feel where the buttons are. Um, also when you press the button down, there's a, a little click. You probably aren't going to hear it on the video, but I can hear it. And um, it also has a really nice tactile sort of clicky feel. Uh, and that's done by sort of inserting these metal domes underneath the buttons. And sort of that higher end keypad is what I would end up using. Because I really think that on this kind of device, you're going to want to have a really nice feel to the keypad. So, you know, spending a little bit more money on the uh, keypad, which is the thing you're going to use to control it, makes sense to me. So that's sort of the direction I'm leaning. I'm not completely finalized on this. I haven't, like, ordered samples or anything, but I have gotten to the point where I can under, um, have gotten some quotes. And the Price for this kind of a thing is something I could afford to put into uh, this kind of a device. So uh, that's the direction I'm leaning. I actually have a PDF with this um, little um, guy on it, and I'm going to be linking to it in the video. I'm actually hoping people will take it and, uh, you know, upload uh, a photo of like just a hand drawn version of what you would like it to look like. That would be super helpful to sort of give me some ideas on what I could do with this because right now it's just, you know, a functional thing. But we can use up to four colors. And the screen and the overall shape has to stay the same. But other than that, you can move these buttons anywhere. You can make them any shape. It's ideal if they're the same shape, but that's not really a requirement. I could do a few different shape, size buttons. Uh, but I'm hoping that the community will upload some examples of what you'd like to see uh, the button system look like. So, um, I'll, I'll point to, uh, links to that PDF in the, uh, show notes for this video. So another thing I've been testing out is the magnet system that holds this together. So there's 
right now there's six magnets and six magnets. I may reduce the numbers. I'm, I'm not really sure on that yet, but um, certainly six works very well. You just sort of get these close together and it snaps and it really holds it together well. Uh, that's There's sort of this lip system that I've created on the case. So it actually sort of overlaps itself. I'm not sure how that's focusing, but uh, that combined with these six magnets really holds it together well. Putting it together as a cinch, it is not going to fall apart at all. So uh, I'm really happy with sort of the way this will come apart. And I think that uh, everyone will like to, and you'll just take it apart only when you're like changing the batteries and things on the inside. So magnets to hold the case together seem to be working great. The next thing I'll be talking about is how I plan to mount this. I've tried a lot of different mounting systems and people on the last video gave a lot of great ideas. The ones that I'm leaning towards right now are keyholes in the bottom and the way that uh, these will work is the same way I've used them on the electric eel wheel nano and that's where you um, can use screws to sort of hold this in place on like a, a heavier board or something or even onto like a, a a surface if you have a dedicated place to put something like this, but just putting a, a he this on a heavy board or something would, would hold it in place. You could also use suction cups with these, and I'm looking into suppliers of suction cups. If they're inexpensive enough, enough I may include them with this device. And the other mounting system is just um, uh, like a, this is just a bolt, and I'm able to uh, put a screw or a nut on it and I've sort of designed the bottom to sort of hold this nut in place So it would come not assembled I think just because it would make the package a lot bigger if I did include it all the way assembled But it's really easy as you can see to sort of do this yourself And you just sort of have to get this hand tight and now you've got sort of this post on the bottom and I haven't designed the actual plastic piece that'll sit here, but the idea is that there'd be a plastic piece and then I'd include a wing nut. And then this plastic piece combined with this would, as you sort of tighten this, it would clamp onto a surface and sort of hold it in place with that. So I think that this is really inexpensive because it's just a, a single bolt and a wing nut and a nut and then a little tiny plastic piece that won't be very hard for me to design or to mold. So I think that this will be a good way to mount it onto tables, but it's also basically free to include these uh, keyhole slots. So I'll, I'll do that as well. And people have a variety of different mounting options and you can use whichever one works best for you. Another great idea that I got as feedback in the last video was that I should include a little speaker that could beep when a certain quantity of yarn, um, yarn is wound through the device. Like maybe you want it to be every 100 meters or every 100 yards or maybe, you know, every 500 or 1,000 or something like that. Or maybe every 20 if you're doing something short. But um, so in addition to having the screen that would count, you'd get some audio feedback to remind you, oh, yeah, you've, you've spun this amount. And I thought that was a really great idea. Uh, I I'm planning to include a little uh, buzzer that will you, you can have at different pitches and things. So I'll be able to fine tune a, a nice, pleasant audio beep that sounds good to the ear. And I'll include that in the uh, circuit board, basically. That's something that I've already put into the design. So I, I really like that idea. I also realized I could make it make a quiet little sound when you press a button or something um, as more feedback that you've pressed a button. And all of this will be controllable through the menuing system. So if you don't want to hear anything, you don't have to hear anything. Um, but if you do want that uh, audio feedback when you're using the device, it can be included. So the reason I have two sets of hooks on each side is I wanted to give people the option to thread the yarn through one or both hooks. So I've done some testing and if you thread it through just one hook, it, it works great, uh, but there's very low amounts of tension on the yarn. Now, if you thread it through both of these hooks, then you'll get more tension on the yarn. And I think that I haven't tested a lot of different yarns, but I think when you start testing different yarns, you're going to find certain types want less tension and certain want more tension. So by putting two sets of hooks on here, I've 
uh, greatly increase the flexibility of the device. And that's something that we'll really know if it's worth doing when we start testing with lots of different yarns and things. So we'll find out then if I need two or maybe even three hooks. Like I don't, I don't know exactly what we'll need, but for the current prototype, these two hooks seem to add a lot of flexibility and uh, not much cost. So that's what I'm using as the starting point for the hook design. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was these two holes in the side. There's one on this side and one over here. So these are going to be special ports, and I don't expect them to be used very often, but it's pretty inexpensive to add that kind of a thing to the electronics, and I thought some people might find them useful in the future, so I'm including them. One of them is pretty simple. It's just a, a power port. So the internal two AA batteries will last a really long time. I'm kind of looking at hundreds of hours at this point, but um, that really depends on a few things that I'm still working out. So I don't want to promise any length of time right now, but the two AA batteries will last a long time on this guy. And I think most people will just use those, but I do know from past products that some people just don't want to worry about batteries and having an external power uh, port will be useful for those people. It's not something I probably would include with it. I don't think I'd include like a power cord like I have with the electric eel wheel and things. But uh, for those who really want to have an external power option, they would have one with this port. And then on the other side, this would be sort of an auxiliary output, output port. And it doesn't really do anything with devices today, but in the future there could be devices that would want to be notified when you reach a certain length of yarn. For example, um, if you had um, a skein winder or a cone winder, you might want to say, oh, I want to put, I don't know, 500 yards of yarn onto this cone and then stop. And then if the cone winder you're using understood the output from this device, it could stop after 500 yards. And you'd be able to program the distance on this device, and then this would sort of notify the other device to turn off at that point. So that's something that, you know, wouldn't be useful today, but I could see myself making additional devices that might want to know how many yards of yarn you've used and then you could use that port. I'm also planning to open uh, the protocol that I'm using for this port. So if some other company wanted to make a device that worked with this yarn counter, then they certainly could. Uh, I'd encourage it. I think it's great when other people um, are able to interface with devices from different companies and I, I'll totally support that and do everything I can to make it easy for other companies to know how this guy works. Um, or at least how this port works. Now here at the end of the video, I have three requests for you. The first one is, as I mentioned, I'm putting a PDF of the keypad out on the web, so in the show notes, so if you're artistically inclined or you just have an idea that you'd like to share with me for the buttons uh, and how you'd like them laid out, definitely download that PDF and just draw in what you think the buttons would be with your hand or if you want to use a computer, whatever. I just need to, I'm, I'm hoping to get several suggestions on what people would like the interface to be and what colors should be used. And I'll use that to sort of come up with a mock-up for a, a version of the keypad that I think uh, will look great. Now, I'll share that once I've um go on that next step. But if people could just get me their ideas, that would be super helpful. The second one is the name. So I've been using Yarn Counter up until now. Uh, another obvious name would be something like Yarn Meter. There's several devices using both of those names out there already. So I'm not sure that I want to reuse those names, but I could do something like the eel yarn counter or dreaming robots yarn counter or maybe just keep it nice and generic since those are usually protected by um, trademark laws where you can't just use a descriptive you can't trademark just a descriptive name like that but um anyways uh i would like people's suggestions on what they think the name should be and maybe we'll vote about the name in some future uh update and then lastly, I'm completely open to any suggestions right now. Like I'm still very much in the 
prototyping and design stages. So if people have anything they'd really like to see included in this device, just um, leave a comment and uh, I, I'll read over all the comments and uh, take into account as, as many as I can reasonably uh, accommodate without sort of either negatively impacting some other aspect or making the cost too expensive. But um, I definitely think about all of the suggestions you guys make and I really appreciate them. Thanks for watching the video.